Jeff, thanks for being with us and uh, talk to us a little bit about how we can keep ourselves in shape during this uh, lockdown. Right on, thanks Chuck. Thanks for having me. And uh, let me just start, <sighs> try to get this PowerPoint thing going. All right, there we go. Can you see that? Yep. All right, man, so um, so this is it, right? So uh, kind of the tactical athlete motto that we have is ready in season, out of season. Oddly enough, got that from, uh, you know, Second Timothy there, uh, you know, Paul's encouraging Timothy to preach word in season, out of season, because there's no off season. Um, and it's the same thing here, like when it comes to being physically fit um, and being able to perform, you know, the enemy, the enemy never rests, you know, spiritually or uh, physically. And uh, we always got to be ready to, yeah, you know I mean, always ready to fight, you know what I mean? And uh, so, so that's pretty much it. So there's no off season. We want, we want to stay on top of, uh, our abilities there. So here's the deal, and this is the truth, guys. Uh, just throwing out some scripture there. Uh, it says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, right? Therefore, I most, uh, most gladly will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And guys, you know, I boast in my weaknesses, not in my strengths. Uh, I got more weaknesses than you can, you can shake a stick at, you know? A lot of times people think, you know, I mean, they'll see what I do or whatever, and they think, oh, Jeff's a natural athlete or he never had injuries, um, which is ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm not a natural athlete. You know, I was a chubby kid, wasn't very talented. Um, you know, you know, I had more injuries than you could shake a stick at. You know, a lot of surgeries and stuff uh, early on in my, like, late teens, early 20s, uh, pretty much broke myself pretty well. Uh, but, but through God's grace, uh, Dude, I, I could do what I do today. You know what I mean? And uh, and and that's it. So, it, it, and this is the thing. The whole purpose of this talk is not talking about me. You know, you know, because I'm not Super Jeff. Is it's about you guys and how you guys can maximize your potential and uh, and run the race that God outlined for you. So, that's kind of what what we're looking at. You know, and this is just, you know, that's my wife, better my better half. You know, I was Turkish get up in her thing it's kind of a fun drill to do uh and again guys it's like i'm able to do that with a shoulder that is not anatomically anchored you know what i mean i had two two bad surgeries back in the 80s uh, that they don't even do anymore you know what i mean only thing keeping that shoulder in place is training correctly uh, same thing getting the support of kettlebell lifting you know i broke a few records this that the other thing because i had a great coach and good technique guys <laughs> so yeah i mean it, you know, you don't have to be great to start. You just got to start to be great. It's kind of the way, the way things go. A couple things you can't fake in life when, uh, when it comes down to it. You can't fake performance. You can't fake endurance. You know, guys, it doesn't matter what I could have done like two years ago, 20 years ago, or anything like that. It's like, what can we do today? You know what I mean? When the Lord calls you, you know, whether you're witness to somebody, you know what I mean? Or you got to punch somebody in the face, shoot them in the face, whatever the deal is, it's like, dude, do you have what it takes to do it today? You know, I mean, first time, good accuracy, all that. Um, so we want operational readiness, right? And performance on demand. That's what we're looking at. You know, can you climb? Can you, do you have the physical capacity to save your own life or the life of somebody else? You know what I mean? Can you swim? Can you climb? Can you walk 20 miles? You know what I mean? Things like that. You know, shoot, move, and communicate. Um, you know, it's kind of what we want to have. Um, Again, man, is pulling a quote from World War II, you know what I mean? It's like, throughout history, the rise and fall of nations seem to coincide with the rise and fall of the physical stamina of, of uh, their people. You know what I mean? You look left and right, you know what I mean? You, the U.S. is not as, you know, we're not as strong as we used to be. You know, we're not as physically fit as we used to be. A lot of, a lot of reasons for that. Uh, a lot of it's because, you know, everybody's been pretty, uh, pretty wealthy for the most part. We've been very blessed as a country, but we also get very soft right? Very soft. So, but we could, we could overcome that. We could definitely overcome that. Um, let's see what we got going here. All right. So here's the deal, right? And he, it's like Chuck said, you know, we're not here trying to be bodybuilders or any of that silliness. You, we want to be fit. 
right? Fit to serve God, fit to serve your family, fit to serve your country, right? When you break down what fitness actually is, it means you're qualified, you're prepared, you're useful, right? If you are not fit, mm, you know what I mean? Then you're gonna be none of the above, right? So just like, you know, scripture says, as men of valor, fit for war, they're useful for war. And guys, we're in a battle, you know, and just, and just throwing it out there, right? Um, and, you know, former military guys will understand this. It's like, guys, there's no FAGs, F-A-G, right? It's an acronym. There's no FAGs in God's army. What does that mean? Former action guys. There's no former action guys. Either you're in it, you're fighting, or you're out of it. You know what I mean? So, dude, you got to be in it. You know what I mean? You got to be in it to win it. So, uh, so as Chuck said, we got the opportunity, right? This COVID-19 deal happening. So, one, if you're not fit, you can get fit. You know what I mean? Some of the fittest guys in the world are stuck in a prison cell. You know what I mean? They choose to, <laughs> they choose to train, you know, because they got nothing else going on. So, uh, and the other thing you do, you can de develop your fight skills. If you don't have them, you can develop them. You know what I mean? And again, all that does is increase your usefulness, you know, as a man, as a man of God, as a protector of your family and things like that, right? Um, so, so here's the deal, right? The bottom line, first thing you want to do when it comes to fitness Nutrition, dude, that's the base of everything. And if you got bad nutrition, dude, you can't out train the dinner table. That's the biggest thing. Dude, I'm half Italian, half Irish. Dude, Italians love food. I love food. Yeah, you know I mean, but you gotta be smart on how you eat, right? Everything we eat or drink either hinders or helps our performance. You know, that's it. Everything. It's either fighting disease or it's feeding disease. Right. And again, we can't out train poor eating habits. So this is from uh, Greg Glassman, founder of CrossFit. He breaks down uh, world class fitness in 100 words. Dude, I just took the first paragraph. And this is it. Eat meat, vegetables, nuts, some seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. Right. Keep your intake levels to that will support exercise, but not body fat. Dude, that's it. Eat food the way God created it. You know what I mean? not so much food products and the garbage that comes in a package. So eat your calories, drink your water. Or black coffee <laughs> or bulletproof coffee. Uh, eliminate sugar, guys, this is the biggest thing. You know what I mean? It's all the stuff about like heart disease, this, that, the other thing, and, and saying that fat's bad for you. No, it's sugar is the culprit. You know, that's, that's leaving cause of heart disease, it's not fat. Sugar cause, causes you to store fat, increases insulin levels, you know, and it's very addicting. It's like crack. You know, I mean, anything worse than sugar is high fructose corn syrup. Um, and it is like in the United States, uh, that's definitely the leading cause of uh, fatty liver, liver disease, which kids are getting, everybody's getting because they're eating garbage, right? So eliminate sugar, biggest thing. You know, the other thing too, you might as well eliminate white bread. There's an old saying we used to like, you know, whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. And a lot of truth to that. So ditch the white bread, ditch the white sugar. You know what I mean? And you'll be all right. The other thing too is explore intermittent fasting. This is a book I throw up here from uh, Jason Fong. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. And guys, here's the thing. Science is catching up with the word of God has been putting out for thousands of years. You know what I mean? There are so many benefits to fasting. And I don't mean starving yourself. I'm talking fasting. Um, it could be like 12 hour fast, 16 hour fast, doesn't matter. There's mechanisms in your body that will increase your health. Actually, I'm not gonna get into all the details, but definitely jump into the, the book. Um, it's a great resource. So there it is right there, bam. Simple, right? Eat nothing, drink water, tea, coffee, bone broth, whatever, right? And you, you guys, if you drink coffee, man, uh, don't, don't put that garbage in it. You know what I mean? No sugar, none of these instant creamer nonsense. If you if you want to like go bulletproof, I'm all about it. You know what I mean? Throw in some MCT oils and some butter. You know what I mean? Improves your mental clarity and all that other stuff. Improves fat burning. And you can see all the benefits right there on the screen. Bottom line, fasting's free and it also sets you free. You know what I mean? You want to get that carb monkey off your back. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, dude, this is the best way to do it. All right. Once you get your diet squared away, right, now we want to get fit. What's the next, next thing? And this is kind of the last thing we're going to talk about is the metabolic conditioning, right? This is what's going to build our conditioning, burn fat, and all the other stuff. Keep it simple, right? Bam, walking. 
if you're, you know, if you got the ability to walk outside, walk outside. That's the biggest thing. If you don't have the ability to walk outside, whip open a window, and I don't care if you step in place, you could throw hand weights, you know, two to three pound weights in your hands, and, you know, move your arms, whatever. Do for, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes. It's kind of boring. You can also, if you, if you want to throw, uh, if you got access to the internet, dude, watch and learn something, you know what I mean, uh, while, while you're working, working your cardio. Uh, definitely want to build up your capacity, dude. Where the average dude should be walk, be able to walk 20 miles in a day, and get get to your objective area and be ready to uh, fight, right? So, and there's so many variations you can do when you walk, right? Like I mentioned hand weights, dude. I'll walk with a shot put, you know what I mean? Pass it around my back, this and that. Throw from hand to hand. Sometimes I carry a slam ball. Sometimes I carry a sandbag. One kettlebell, two kettlebells. Sometimes I wear a plate carrier. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I put on a light rock. It depends how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? And that's it, man. Also, sprinting. You know, I don't care if you sprint five meters or 400 meters. You know what I mean? Biggest thing for functionality, right, is one, be able to cover distance walking, and two, being able to sprint. Because when there's time to move, you need to move quickly, right? Very important. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Breathing. This is another good resource. Uh, this girl does a lot of work with um, special operators and stuff like that in the military community. Uh, again, and I love a quote. It says, athletes don't need more cardio for endurance. They need this book. And it's true. Breathing, proper breathing exercises. She takes 14-day programs. Phenomenal. Guys, it's free. Airs. Here's the thing, man. Airs free. You know what I mean? Fasting is going to like, you know what I mean? And if you don't got food, it's going to, you know, whatever, man. You're still going to be all right. You know what I mean? And when you understand the fasting thing, you can see how people can go five days, 10 days, 15 days with minimal food and still be able to perform. Uh, some old school uh, physical culture stuff, Stonewall Jackson. Love this guy for multiple reasons. One, this is it, man. His posture is great, right? Always worked his posture. He's big on breathing exercises. Every morning, take a stiff walk, do some light dumbbells, finish with a cold bath. That is classic old school physical culture. You study it, guys. That's what all those guys did. And they stay in phenomenal shape. Um, really, man, their entire life. Uh, let's see what else we got. So that's it. That's it. If that's all you did for fitness, one, get your nutrition right. Two, you know what I mean? Walk, right? Do your breathing exercises. You know what? And while you're at it, you know, do some, uh, do some neck exercises. If you're going to do one thing to strengthen, strengthen your neck, you know what I mean? There's a lot of benefits to it. One, keeps you from getting knocked out, right? Two, uh, protects yourself if you get in an accident, you know, dude, and it keeps you from getting concussions. You know what I mean? Some people, their neck is so skinny, man, they can snap their hair. They can snap their own neck in a hair combing accident. You know what I mean? I don't got much hair right now, so I don't have to worry about that, but develop your neck. All right. With that said, Let's get into a fighting skill development. Guys, you know, like anything, man, violence is really the, really the, rarely the answer, but when it is the answer, it's the only one. And, and that's it. You know what I mean? When it's time to throw down, do you either got it or you don't. You know what I mean? And this is it. Anybody who's been involved in law enforcement, I teach use force and all that. God, it's the bad guy who chooses what level of force you throw on them. You know what I mean? If they're encroaching you, this and that. You know what I mean? You say, hey, that's close enough, stop, whatever, right? You know what I mean? They don't listen to that, boom, you may, you may need to drop them, right? Some people may punch in the face, some people may be shot in the face. It depends on what their intent is, right? And I don't say that flippantly, it's just a reality. It's just reality. So these are the basics. Boxing, wrestling, and work the farm, do some dry practice, right? Boxing is the purest form of striking, yeah, I did do martial arts and all that. Yeah, but I also box. And guys, if you develop one thing, develop your lead. Straight lead, right? Keep your chin down, eyes up, boom. That left hand, because I'm right-handed, that's my lead hand. Dude, that one, that, that intercepts and blocks the overhand right. You know what I mean? Plus, you want to be first and fast. It's the quickest one there, boom. Everybody's got a, uh, a plan until they get punched in the face. So one, you know, develop your lead, work your straight punches. One, two. That's it. That's the basics. You know what I mean? For wrestling, hand fighting, right? You got to learn a little grappling and that. That's going to keep you from getting taken down 
and, uh, and put you in a better position. And again, firearms. Unfortunately, a lot of guys think because they have a firearm, all of a sudden, like, they can handle every situation. Not the case. Not the case. You, you need to have a lot of training comes with that. Dry practice, real training, situational-based training, use of force stuff, all that. And, dude, and the thing is, is, like, if you're out of shape, if you haven't practiced, you know what I mean? Can you drop from a sitting position? Can you drop? You know, there's so much to it, guys. But it's all fundamentals. It's, be, it's being enabled to apply the fundamentals. So here, in, in a nutshell, this is it. If you want to learn, if you're like, ah, oh, there's so much out there, this is it. Look what the five and eight-year-olds are doing, right? What, what's, uh, you know, a kid who's, who first takes, you know, boxing or wrestling, a five or eight-year-old, look at the skills that they're doing and master those guys. That's it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't do forget about the fancy stuff. Keep it simple. Right. And again, man, with speed surprise, violence of action, you can't beat it, you know? All right. See what we got. And this is it. You know, great quote. We don't rise to the level of our expectation, right? We fall to the level of our training. I tell you, everybody thinks they're going to be here. Right. And, and if, you, if you don't train, dude, you're going you're gonna to be sad. You know what I mean? It's, it's not going to be – you're not going to be performing like you think. You know what I mean? You want to train to take out trained fighters. There's always going to be more than one guy, always. You know what I mean? And this is like – yeah, man, it's, it's it. When it's time to go, you got to go. You know what I mean? Got to be ready. And, again, it's the will – with the will to drill. That's it. That's what develops skill, keeps yourself from getting killed. Right, and that's me training ladies, dude. They're they're crushing it, you know. Every every girl needs to know how to throw a punch, shoot, you know what I mean. Protect yourself from getting choked out. Um, old school physical culture. Wrapping this up, right? Robert Fitzsimmons, dude's um, he was a, he, a three division world champion back in the in the old days, early uh, turn of the century. Dude, what do you work on? He worked on his posture, breathing exercises. Did some band work, light dumbbells, whatever, bag punching. He also uh, used to train with um, Teddy Roosevelt when he was a uh, president. You know what I mean? And, th and, this, and, dude, Teddy Roosevelt, there's another guy. Study him. Dude, he boxed. He wrestled even in the White House. And that guy can walk. You know, he swim the Potomac in the, in the wintertime. Dude's a maniac. Love him. So, anyway, look what the old-time dudes are doing. That's what you need to be doing. And, again, regular, you know, you want to you want to train on a consistent basis, right? It does not take talent to be consistent. It doesn't. You know what I mean? You're never too old. This is my buddy Mike, dude. He's a two-time Vietnam vet. He's, he, his first tour was in '68, '69. Then um, he was in the Marine Corps. He went in as a private. Did his tour. Came out. And he still stayed in. Then he did. Um, then he was an officer. Dude, went back. Dude, he's been like, he got out of the Marine Corps as a major. And uh, dude, I met him years ago. Dude's in, he's probably 70, 71. Still running and gunning. Can outshoot me, outshoot so many guys. Uh, I, I love him to death, man. You're never too old. I know so many guys that are in their late 60s, early 70s that can outshoot, outbox, out wrestle. They could crush me on any day. And dude, that's what you want. That's what you want to be, guys. That's what you want to work towards. There's another kid who uh, he got blown up in Afghanistan, 101st Airborne. He came through one of my kettlebell courses. Dude, he, like, lost uh, vision in his left eye. He's blind in his left eye. He's missing his left arm. Guys, he, he's like, doing a Turkish gap there with a kettlebell, right? You're never too injured. He's, and you see his left knee is pretty jacked up. And, uh, dude, you're never too broken. You can always – you can always train, guys. You know, I had like two surgeries on my right shoulder, one on my left. You know what I mean? ACL, you know, mystics, all that stuff reconstructed into my left knee. Dude, I, I could go all day long on on injuries, but you got to you gotta overcome them. Last thing here, guys, is like if you knew you were going to fight tomorrow, you know, if you're going to fight for your life tomorrow, would you change the way you train today? You know, um, Vince Lombardi said fatigue makes cowards of us all, and, bro, it does. There is no worse feeling in the world. If you're fighting with all your might, you're giving all you got, and the guy you're fighting against or is trying to kill you or whatever the deal is, you know what I mean? You're starting to run out of gas, and he's just like, and you haven't impressed him with anything. Bro, that's like the worst feeling in the world. You never want that. You want to you wanna be in shape, right? Can't fake performance. Can't fake endurance, right? 
And you know, I'll just close and bless be the Lord, my rock, change my hands for war, my fingers to fight. Guys, yeah, I mean, being in the Christian phase, ultimate warrior right there. And by the way, that's my grandfather uh, in the upper left of that. Red Moffat, he uh, he was a pro fighter back in the in the late 30s. Maniac. He's a, he's on the Irish side. He's a great guy. Became a you know you know it was typical. Grew up in the depression. He fought for four years. Uh, did great in boxing. Very famous up in Connecticut area. Um, became a police officer. It was in you know World War II. It was in the Navy. Had a lot going on. Stud in shape to the day he died. That's it. World's our gym, guys. You can have results or excuses. You can't have both. That's all I got, Chuck. I hope, hope I stayed in my time limit, bro. <laughs>